Richards channel, where you always learn a multitude of key concepts to improve your painting skills. Four. Hey there, this is a chateau in Switzerland. Um, this is the painting we're going to be doing. This is episode two of four. Yes. This hey, class, um, we're here again at uh, the, my upstairs loft studio in uh, the Arts Place in Danbury, North Carolina. Um, so it's a beautiful place to come to. If you ever want to visit the area, they'll just put a little plug in for the area while we're talking. Is uh, so there's a Hanging Rock State Park here in North Carolina is the most visited park in North Carolina, and it's beautiful. It's got uh, Kitty. How many? Four waterfalls? In, uh, four? I think they're five. 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 Okay. Five waterfalls. And uh, then a the, uh, big, beautiful lake up there. You can go boating and fishing and um, cabins you can rent. I, I didn't realize I was doing a plug for Hanging Rock. But anyway, the Arts Place is in Danbury, which is right next to that. And uh, at the Arts Place, there's always musical events. This afternoon, there's going to be a play and uh, a gallery and a, uh, a shop where there's all kinds of local crafters that display their works, uh, coffee and ice cream. and um, So it's just a nice place to come to, good place to do a day trip, a uh, weekend trip, that kind of thing. And if you're up here, um, stop in and see us and uh, become a part of the paint class. Uh, bring your paints or just hang out and watch and uh, enjoy our company because it's not just about me but it's about all these wonderful people that come to paint class week after week and you're a part of that so uh, come out and see us. Well uh, today's topic is going to be uh, glazing and uh, glazing sounds like it's some kind of intricate uh, complicated uh, process or something but um, you're going to see that it's actually pretty um, simple. And, uh, but it's one of those simple things that will make your painting life uh, way easier. Because one of the main things that happens when uh, we paint, and in particular with beginning painters, is we have a tendency to make everything in focus everywhere in the painting. And so there's hard edges on everything. And I'm going to kind of go into uh, why that happens because I think it might be helpful to, for you to be able to see um, how to use that and how to avoid the pitfalls that go along with that. Um, now, the thing that I teach is something called the hand, or I call it the hand. And these are five elements that um, make for a good painting. Now each of these kind of has their like subcategories, but uh, by and large this is a good way to just kind of look at it. For a beautiful, lovely painting, if you capture light, it doesn't matter if you get anything else right, you're going to have a lovely painting. You capture light in the painting. The next thing is the technical things that go into making that happen. And the first is your drawing, which has to do with composition as well. And then there's values. So values, when we say values, we're talking about how light or how dark is something. And maybe associated with that might be the contrast, like how light to how dark. Um, and so contrasting elements of that values. The next thing is color. And so there's a lot of different things that have to do with color, and we talk about them often. Uh, you know, uh, chroma and neutralization and the hue and all of these various different things that have to do with color. And then this last one, and these are in order of precedence. So, um, you know, this is the most important. This is, it falls down at the end of the list, but it doesn't mean it's not important. It just means that it may be something that you work on last, or it may be something, that, well, I can tell you this, it's the hardest thing to pick up for people who are painting. And it's maybe the hardest thing to teach as well, but that's edges, edges and textures I kind of put into one little category there. 
And so the thing that we're talking about today, glazing, um, is a way of being able to combat one of those kind of left brain, and not just left brain things, but one of those kind of things that are a challenge for us as painters, um, which has to do with how our eyes focus. Um, and so uh, let me go into that just a little bit. So um, when you look at something in the room, I want you to just kind of follow along with me and do this, okay? So um, if I were to look at my hand, y'all look at your hand. You can actually, if you look closely, you can see the little lines that make up what will create fingerprints, right? You, you can see all the creases and, and you can start reading your palm. Right. Um, but if we were across the room, you wouldn't be able to see all those details, right? But um, so our eyes focus on it, right? Because that's the thing that we're focusing on. But don't take your eyes off your hand. Look at your palm. And I want you to, at the same time, notice maybe somebody that's uh, sitting behind your hand. And stay focused on your hand. Uh, what color is that person's eyes? Uh, what color is their hair? Uh, what, what are they wearing? As long as you're still looking at your palm, you're going to have very little idea what that other person looks like at all. You wouldn't be able to pick them up out of a lineup, that's for sure. Um, so what's happening? My eyes are focused on my hand. So all of y'all sitting out there, you're just these blurry images. I can tell there's people there, but not much more. Now, holding my hand up right in front of my face, if I look at Sally, my hand is completely out of focus, right? It's just this blurry thing right here in front of me. And, and so this is how our eyes work, right? It focuses on one thing at a time. And so, you know how we've been talking about point of interest in our paintings? What happens if our point of interest is in focus and everything else is out of focus? That's the way our eyes actually work, right? But rarely do you see that because when you see a photograph, you're always going to see every aspect of the photograph is perfectly in focus, right? That's the way a camera works. It's the way a printer works. And so, uh, and also a camera like really kind of starts um, trying to adjust and accommodate for things so that it's reading all the information properly. So it causes certain contrast of lights and darks and things. And a printer does the exact same thing. So you printed it off, you uh, kind of like doubled that effect, you know. And so everything's more sharp edged. Everything's a little bit more crisp and in focus. So, but that's not how we really see. So if we want to draw somebody's eye into this point of interest in our painting, we want to think about that in the same way that we make the rest of the painting less interesting, maybe, and also that we make the rest of the painting not as in focus. Now, in the case of this landscape, we've got a mountain right behind the castle here. We have another mountain that is a little farther distant. It's all the way on the other side of the lake from us. And then we've got a mountain that is on back behind that mountain. And even though it's almost the same size, it's farther back. We can tell that it's got the snow caps on it for one thing, which means there must be some altitude to it, right? Um, whereas this one, I don't see any snow on this one, right? So it's a little lower down. And then I'm thinking, I'm, uh, you can see it a little bit, it may be clouds, but uh, there might be a little touch of a mountain on back there, which it, even if there isn't, it might be fun to kind of put that in there. So we've got layers then, and those layers should be a little bit less in focus as they go back a little less um, defined and contrasted and harder edged. So we're going to apply what I've been saying to you. And we're going to create these layers a little bit more 
by just putting glazes on top of these. So let me uh, just kind of start creating some glaze. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with just kind of like a little light film. So I'm just taking some titanium white. And this back here, I just want it to be more grayish. So I'm going to take some light blue. And I'm going to take a little bit of orange. Now, why would I use orange and blue together? Anybody have a clue? Make it neutral. You want to neutralize it. So I'm creating a gray that is in the blue category of grays. So if I'm trying to make a bluish gray, the best thing to do is to start with a blue. Use the color opposite of the color wheel, or in other words, its color complement. I want it a little lighter than what it is. I'm going to add some white. And so we get this nice, light colored, bluish gray. It's pretty easy to do right there, right? And then I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm going to wet it and wring it out so that it's just damp. I don't want it to be running at all. And I'm going to take our nice light bluish gray and just the amount of moisture that's in my paper towel is going to make this little wet wash. That wet wash, that's good. Okay. So this paint that's on my canvas, it's been drying for over a week. So when I add this on top of this, it's just a layer on top of it. And because it's so thin, it's going to be translucent. So we're actually going to see through it and see the original painting. We're not adding opaque paint. We're not obscuring the original detail that we put in all these shadows and stuff, but we are graying it out a little bit. And you'll notice those shadows that were pretty hard edged before are gonna soften out a little bit. This blue that was a little too blue is going to gray out a little bit. I'm going to show you what happens when I add that same wash, that same glaze, over top of a portion of this mountain. And we're not going to use that same glaze, but I want you to just see what would happen if we were to add. See how it's lightening it and softening the uh, chroma of that color because we're adding the gray. But we want this to be a little closer to us, so I want it to be a little more in the blue range with just a slight bit of greenishness to it. So I'm going to begin with a green. So what colors make green? Blue and yellow. And I'm taking kind of this medium blue. Now look at how high chroma that is. Boy, is that an intense color right there, right? Mm -hmm. So if I added that to that, everybody would be like, wow, bam, just about knocked me over. Well, what do I use to neutralize green? Red? Absolutely, there you go. So I'm going to take a little bit of this cad red, start introducing it into it. I want it to be almost gray, this green, so neutralized that it's hardly green anymore. It's just a gray, but it's a gray that is in the green family. So you notice I'm just adding little bits and little bits of red at a time until it gets to where it's grayed out but I can still recognize it as a green gray as opposed to just a flat gray. Ooh, I really added a lot of red all of a sudden, didn't I? I went too far. So I'm just adding a little more green into that mix again. <laughs> Is that a happy accident? That was just a plain accident. 
Yeah, and then I'm going to add some white to it so that I'll make it a little lighter. Now you see how gray it is? But I want it to have a little bit of a green spill to it, so I'm swirling a little bit more green back into there. And I've got, I'm going to throw that paper towel away because I have a big blob of red that attached itself to it. I had nothing to do with it. That red just jumped on there all by itself. <laughs> was it my fault? <laughs> I used to work with a guy, his name was Charlie. He was one of those get too close to your face guys, right, to talk to you. He would go, lie, lie, lie. <laughs> <laughs> I said something silly like that. He, he didn't seem to get that I was just trying to be funny. You know? just, so lie, 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 lie. If yeah. you're doing a glaze, uh -huh. uh, see, Whatever you're painting, you want it to be a neutral uh, from the colors that are within that. Does that make sense? Like, say you wanted to glaze over something that was red, red, red. Uh huh. So you would get a gray red? If you're trying to gray it out, which is what we're doing in this case, we're trying to make it less neutral and to make it less. The, the main thing that we're doing here, using this glazing as a tool, is softening out some of the edges. So um, you wouldn't necessarily glaze every painting you did? No, no, you would okay, not. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, this is a tool where you don't have to repaint the whole painting to achieve your ends. Uh, in this case, trying to lighten some of this trying to soften out some of these edges. Now you'll notice I'm using this glaze. I just added some white to this. There may be areas that I want to give kind of a sense that there's a hill on the hill. You know, so it's going up. Maybe there's like this ridge line that just kind of goes up right here. And it's a little lighter. And I can create a hill on the hill a little bit by doing that. Maybe a, a lit side to this over here. Maybe some of this goes back a little farther. See that kind of shadowy top? It's maybe a little too pronounced. And we can just rub some of this over top of it. I'm going back with my thumb and just kind of rubbing some of that off, but you can take a, a brush and kind of clean that so you get a little bit more of a edge there. Okay, um, I should have done a before and after picture, it might have been helpful. Okay, and then this green that's in the foreground we're going to create something that is a little bit more chromatic. So I'm going to leave a little bit more green in this mix and not use that red so much in this mix, but I am going to use it. I am going to use a little red to neutralize it. I'm just not going to neutralize it as much as I did before. And let's see what happens. And this, then, I'm going to create a little bit more of an edge than what was there before so that it stands out in contrast to stands out in contrast to um, these mountains behind it. So, yeah, that's probably too powerful. That's powerful. Um, so we can work on that. But um, we're creating this layer that goes on back. Up to so, um,
Maybe next week we'll come back and we'll show how to kind of refine some of that now that we've kind of got these layers. But do you see how when we walked in here, we didn't have the sense that we had three dimensions. We didn't have the sense that this was going on back. It was all too flat. It was all a two-dimensional painting, no depth to it. And we were able to create that without repainting all of those, but just by adding some translucent glare. Look, some translucent glazes. I tried to say glazes and layers all in the same word. So, okay. So would you, there's, I don't see any reason to glaze the lake. Oh, no. It looks, okay. No, I, I, I would leave that like just the way, I, I'm not going to say I would leave it just the way it is. We still need to work on it, but we don't need to glaze it. Yeah. Okay. All right. any, any other questions before y'all go to paint? Okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you, because I heard y'all talking about glazing, and I didn't have a clue what that was. So. Okay. All right, well, my problem is I think I was trying to copy this in too much detail, so mm -hmm. now I'm not happy with how it looks. Well, that portion of it that you've developed is beautiful. So, um, thank you. Yeah, uh, here, here's the thing this is, this is a difficult concept to catch, but it really is true for anybody at whatever level of painting they happen to be at. Is your point of interest is going to be that thing that ends up getting developed. It'll have the details, it'll have whatever it is that makes it like the best thing that you can do. So in other words, if you're painting that building and you know, you paint it and you started painting yesterday mm -hmm. and so you've only got a certain skill level to get that painting to. You paint that building the best you can possibly paint it. Everything else needs to be kind of basically reduced down from right, there. Right, right. So now let's, uh, in contrast, let's say that you have been painting for 40 years and you're an ultimate master. You can do that building a lot better right. than that person two, started two days ago. Right. Um, and then, but you're still going to tone everything down from that point, right? you know, to whatever your skill level is. So if this is your ultimate skill level right here, um, it needs to be reduced in its quality, say. It just needs um, to be more simple, right? It needs to be more simplified, yeah, yeah. yes. So, and, and we can do that in a number of ways, you know, mm -hmm. what we were just talking about, about glazing. So, you know, you may glaze over it and soften out some of it, um, whereas this may be a little more crisp, right. a little more detailed, a little mm -hmm. more contrasted, mm -hmm. you know, all of those kind of things that, and, and so, I wouldn't worry about it, because you can always tone something down. Okay. Okay. You, you can't develop it. Well, I shouldn't say can't develop it more, but there's going to be a point at which your skill level keeps you from developing right, it too right. much further. Well, so, and yeah. quickly, I just want to say uh, this green is just too high chroma. It is, yes. <laughs> uh, um, that, that may, it, my colors are too high chroma mm -hmm. if, if I'm focusing on this. Yes. Yeah. And, and so if you wanted to drop the chroma here, you could do what we were talking about before. Use a wash that would be a reddish based wash. Um, so it that could be a neutralize green. Neutralize it. Mm -hmm. uh, th th that way, um, when we're seeing this, um, we're kind of seeing that original green through a film of red. Oh, okay, okay. And so our eye will just kind of mix it together and it will become neutral. Okay. Um, and, and that way you don't have to repaint it. Because uh, lots of times what you'll end up doing, like, see, all the little dark and light areas in here yeah. that cause us to recognize that there are numerous trees and that that mountain's just kind of farther back. So that even though these might be giant oaks, they're only, you know, uh, an eighth of an inch yeah. tall, right? Yeah. It, it, you can develop, and I even do this lots of times on purpose. I'll develop, uh, you know, a hillside like this with trees that are pretty developed. And then I'll go back to the way I glaze, and I can put layers of glaze. 
so I, I can put a layer of glaze and see, does that kind of like soften out those edges? Does that kind of lighten it? Does that break the chroma? Whatever I feel like I need to do to that in order to get it feeling atmospheric enough that it's this far back right, or right. that far back. Yeah, no, because that's much farther back than this right. or this. Right, this is so, closer yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Now, to do, if I were to do that right now with that red, would I just use like the solvent, whatever your solvent is, mix it with red, mm -hmm. water it down, and then kind of get yeah. it on here? Yeah. All right, I'm going to try that. Okay, yep. All right, thank you. And, and uh, do a little test, like, you know, because uh, until you're familiar with mixing glazes, you don't know just how much pigment per solvent that you want right, in right. order to get the correct uh, kind of thickness of glaze, okay, okay. opaqueness of glaze or translucency of glaze. I should do that before the castle. The castle I should do. Yeah, because yeah, okay. if, if you go over the edge of the castle, so what? Yeah. You're going to come back in and okay. do more detailed work on it. Thank you. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you're getting a lot of value out of all of these videos that we're posting on the artist Craig Richards channel. Um, you know, there's all kinds of how-tos, there's the weekly paint class, uh, and there's occasional outings like uh, going out in plain air somewhere. We're going to be going down the Yadkin River in the spring, uh, going to museums, things like that. I think you'd enjoy those. Um, if you're getting value out of these, then uh, do the, uh, like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, you have to subscribe in order to be able to hit the notification bell, and that's for you. Um, the reason I'm saying that is so that uh, you know when the next paint class is coming out, so that if you're working on a painting and we're doing it again the next week, that you can follow along with us. And leave us comments, you know, not just for me, but for the students as well. Say, you know, Deb, you did a great painting, Kitty, you did a great painting, or Craig, you did a great demonstration this week. Um, that builds us up, and we want to build you up as well. We want to help you to keep painting and keep growing. You're doing great. Uh, don't tell yourself you're not. Um, you are doing wonderful. Just keep at it, and you'll learn and grow each week with us. So, happy painting.